that was based, obviously the course was on the passage we'll look at. Proverbs chapter 31, if you'll join me there. And uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 31, if you'll join me there. A message this morning, and uh, we'll be geared towards really saying thank you. We'll explain a little bit more about that. But I would ask you as we turn to Proverbs 31, I mentioned it earlier, so I'll just mention quickly. Appreciate your prayers for my wife, Erica. She is uh, on her way down to Florida even as we speak. Her grandfather, who went through bypass surgery, uh, got an infection and is doing uh, quite worse. He was on dialysis uh, for two to three hours each day and wasn't getting better. So he is elected to go home on hospice, and uh, uh, so we don't know how much longer he has. He's unsaved. And things uh, there has not responded to the gospel, so I would just appreciate your prayers. Eric is praying for an opportunity to witness to him, and uh, there'll be other family members there too who are, have many spiritual needs. Uh, I just appreciate your prayers for protection for her and uh, guidance and direction the Holy Spirit be able to use her there. Uh, Proverbs chapter 31. Let's look down the familiar verse, verse number 10, if you will, with me. Uh, great statement, isn't it? Uh, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. We know the text well, and I know you do, and it's been preached many times. I think we'll look at it maybe a little bit differently here today, but a, a quick scan of the passage, perusal of the passage, uh, tells us one of the greatest characteristics of the lady mentioned here in, in Proverbs 31 is that she is a mother. It's found throughout all the passage. You see that many references to the reality that she is a mom, and, and this virtuous woman, and this, uh, this hard-working woman, this provider, this, uh, she is a mother. Now, don't mistake it, you can still, as this verse, or as this passage is all-encompassing, it also includes ladies who don't have children, and I'm thankful for that. All of them can be virtuous, and yet you find a characteristic that she has children. This morning, moms, I, I want to simply spend some time in this message, in this sermon, saying thank you to all that are gathered here, all who are uh, joining us via live streaming. Um, I am grateful for the moms here. I, I, I can't express it. It doesn't seem right just to take one day and do it. I trust that we do it frequently and often. And even in this message, boy, I would dedicate it to my own wife. And uh, she is the best mom for my children that I could ever dream of. And thank, thank the Lord for her. I'm, I'm grateful for my own mother who has done so much for me, continues to do so. And I am grateful for all of the moms. And so I, I hope you'll sit back. If you're a mother here this morning, I hope you'll sit back and just appreciate and kind of bask in the God. I, I want to brag on you a little bit. I, I want to say glory to God for who you are and what you have done and, and say thank you for your service, uh, for your ministry, if we could put it that way. I, uh, I want to encourage you to keep on keeping on. Embrace your powerful role in the lives of your children and grandchildren. I, I want you to be comforted this morning by the thought that though you may be daily taken for granted at times, you are tremendously appreciated. And I think you're not only appreciated by us, but you're appreciated by God. And your impact and influence, not only on your household, but on the whole world, is noticed and marked by your account. And that's really where the, the title of the message is simple. Thank you to the mothers who influence our world. Who influence our world. Um, and, and by saying thank you, and to say thank you, I should say, I want to reflect on the great degree and influence and impact of your lives. You may think you're nothing. I, I hate it that sometimes our society and culture takes a, a mom, a stay-at-home mom, whatever the case may be, and, and belittles it, makes it seem so unimportant. Can I tell you, your role and your task is as important, if not more so, than any other. I truly believe that as a pastor, as a father, as a husband who, who sees it and understands the labor and the intensity that goes into it. Moms, you, you are awesome. <laughs> you are heroes. And uh, you really are, as that song even stated. And I want to just say thank you this morning. I, wanna, I, I want us to all think, young, the young people here and all of us who have moms, and if you're alive, you have one. Uh, so I want you to think about this and how, how we say thank you to them. Napoleon once said this, and uh, it's a great statement. He said, let France have good mothers, and she will have good sons. Uh, godly character, a mother with godly character can and will produce generations to come of people with godly character. Certainly we don't agree with Napoleon much of what he did, but it's a great statement. It's true. He, it, it, it's nationally reflective. Someone has rightly concluded this statement, the successful mother is the key to a successful home and nation. I agree wholeheartedly. I would say a hearty a, amen to that. You say, well, how can that be? Well, it has both been stated and I believe confirmed in life's experiences that there is no other force in the life of a child that is as strong as an influence as the mother in all that she does. 
Mothers have not only shaped their homes, but they've shaped the lives of their children. They've not only shaped the lives of their children, but they've shaped nations. They've not only shaped nations, but they have literally shaped history. You see, Napoleon would go on to add to his earlier statement. He said this, the future destiny of the child is always the work of the mother. Oh, this is not for us as believers to discredit God. Certainly, God is the ultimate force, no doubt. But my friend, as a human being growing up in a home, if you have a godly mother, what a force that can be. If you are a godly mother, you are a force. May I say, as we heard this morning in Sunday school, we have an adversary. Hey, you are a force to be reckoned with by our adversary. If you're a godly mother in training your child, what a great truth. Theodore Roosevelt, he was our 25th vice president, our 26th president, if I'm correct on that. He added to this his honorable view of, it, of mothers. He said this in a great statement, too. The mother is the one supreme asset of the national life. She is more important by far than the successful statesman, businessman, artist, or scientist. I would add a hearty amen to that. Our nation is blessed to have godly mothers. Most famous men in history were shaped and influenced by their mothers. Here's what one author wrote. He said, George Washington's mother was a patriotic and religious woman. Her son became the father of his country. Lord Bacon's mother was a woman of superior intelligence and deep piety. Um, The mother of Patrick Henry, I like that name, was known for her remarkable conversational ability. Sir Walter Scott's mother was a great lover of poetry and literature. I would interject that these mothers played a crucial role in setting their children on the trajectory to do great things. And certainly these mothers deserve some of the credit. In contrast, here's what is said of Lord Byron's mother. Tempetuous, notorious, scandalous, the poet Lord Byron, by all accounts, took after his equally formidable mother, Catherine. She was described by many to be prideful, contentious, and violent. And so was her son. Not to be outdone, and this is amazing to me, Nero's mother, her name was Julia Agrippina, who, all, who was also called Agrippina the Younger. She had a huge influence on her son, Nero, in his early days. He would eventually have his own mother murdered, but not before he had one failed attempt. Quite a story. He actually put her out in a boat that was designed to sink in the Bay of Naples. Sent her out and hoping that she would die. And uh, she was much more resilient than her own son realized. She actually swam back to shore and lived. So later, she, he had her put to death in her country home. You say, well, wow, in the world, how can a son treat a, a mother like that? Where did he learn to be so cruel and murderous? Well, the saying goes, doesn't it? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Agrippina has been described by historians as greedy, lustful, murderous, Uh, statements that were proven true by the actions in her life. She was caught early on in a conspiracy against her brother, the emperor Gaius, Gaius, also known as Caligula, and uh, she was exiled from the country for many years. Upon returning, she was later uh, accused and most believe guilty of poisoning and killing her second husband. She then conspired to marry her uncle so that her son Nero could gain the throne, and eventually she even opposed her own son Nero when he did take the throne. Can I tell you, there's no doubt a mother influences her children for good or for evil. You will have an impact. You're going to impact it. I'd like to end on a better note, amen? Take Susanna Wesley. Susanna Wesley had 19 children. Woo-hoo! If, if there was videos and movies back then, they would have been probably the focus of one, right? The, the Wesley, okay, well, I'll just stop there. Anyway, 19 children. Yet she made time and took time. Every week, she spent one hour which eat with each of her children in religious teaching and instruction. In doing that, she taught them to love God and love the Bible. We know the outcome of that. Her son, John, was instrumental in founding Methodism, and several of her sons have contributed to the Christian faith, whether it be through hymns or other great assets that are a benefit to us. What a blessing. What an influence. So you will influence your children. You know, the fact is this. What do we see in all these examples? The handprint of the mother and the lives of their children. 
Have you ever walked in and, and, and maybe a, a church or school or maybe somebody's home and they put it in concrete and when they were pouring the concrete, uh, they let their kids put their footprints in or their handprints? And you've seen that, and boy, it lasts, it seems, for a long time. And you always notice that handprint, or you always notice that footprint. It stinks when you buy someone else's house, and they did that, amen? And uh, who do those belong to, right? You know, and you, let's fill that in. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you always notice that it sticks around, doesn't it? Can I tell you, in the life of a child, a mother's handprint is there. For good or for evil, the handprint's noticeable. It can be seen. You are, Mom, going to pass on something to your children. And going back to the theme of this morning's message, I want you to know that we are thankful for your influence and impact. Well, Abraham Lincoln was a great president. Here's what he said about his own mom, (laughs) and I think he got brownie points. He said this, all that I am or can become, I owe to my angel mother. Now, that's a good son. Amen, moms? (laughs) All that I am or all that I can become, I owe to my angel mother. Wonderful statement of honor and tribute. Yet, Other things can be said, too. A pastor told a story of the other side of that coin. Uh, An older mother came to him in great sorrow and great grief, and uh, she was talking about her own son's failed marriage and how that led to him committing suicide. In that statement or that conversation, she simply looked at her pastor, and she said, Pastor, our home, our home was a broken home, and the old saying is true. There are few unbroken eggs in a broken nest. Had an impact. She admitted that her part had played, that she had played in that broken nest and had uh, found an imprint on the lives of her children. Don't try to tell me that mothers are not one of the greatest forces in the lives of children. Your actions matter, and they have great impact. Moms, let me say today, thank you for your role and impact in the lives of your children. Never forget that your handprint will be forever seen in the lives of your children for good or for evil. I want to encourage you in what most of you are already striving to be. A Proverbs 31 mother and leaving a great godly heritage. How do you make a positive godly impact? How do you be that kind of mother? Proverbs 31, well, the reality is most of you already know. I've seen it in how you live and how you train your children. But I want to highlight the how in saying thank you. Because I think we have a great group of mothers here at Fostoria Baptist Church. And I want to just say thank you for how you've put these things into practice, what you already do, and, and maybe there's an area to shore up. And, and, hey, can I speak to every child here, and whether you're an old child like me or you're a young child, can I encourage you? You know, mothers aren't perfect, but on a day like today, you ought to highlight what they do well. And you ought to thank them for where they excel and what they do well. They're not perfect. None of us are. But aren't you thankful you have a mom? And then anything above that is, is a bonus. <laughs> So be thankful for that today. As we go through these things, hey, listen, this will be a, I've used the the acrostic uh, thanks, the word thanks, and we'll look at that. If you haven't filled out your Mother's Day card, you can steal it. You have my permission, okay, to write this in here and and say thank you to mom for these things. Would you look at verse 27 of the passage? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 27, notice it. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Man, what a statement. May I say this first about moms? Thank you for being tireless in serving your family. Thank you for being tireless in serving your family. I find it both interesting and notable that when Christ came to educate his disciples and followers, one of his much repeated themes throughout his teaching was that of service and serving. See, Christ didn't speak a whole lot of, about leadership outside of the reality of serving. Service connected to servant leadership, we describe it as. He demonstrated himself. He taught it. He encouraged it. He celebrated it. And may I say this morning, I, I don't know any group of people that embraces and lives up to that aspect of Christ's teaching more so than mothers. If we were to identify the great servants in our midst, it has to be moms. They serve tirelessly. Thank you for that. Long ago, Northland University, before it went off the deep end and eventually shut its doors, 
At one point, I, I know for a fact that it's uh, those who were in graduate degrees and things like that. They, they gave them a most unique graduation gift. I don't know if they did it for undergrads. Um, somebody who graduated from there might be able to tell me, but I know they did it in the graduate level. It was a most unique gift. And I thought, I, ever since I heard about it, in fact, I saw one, had a good friend who got one. And I thought, that's a very unique gift. I think it's a, 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 a good gift. It was a good idea. When they graduated, they would present them not only with their, not only their diploma, but they would present them with a towel. Just a towel. You see, it was a towel like the one that Jesus Christ used to kneel and wash the feet of his disciples. A towel that signifies the act of service. Serving someone else. A good leader is a servant. He or she knows how to serve. Sometimes in my out there mind, I, I've often considered... <laughs> Uh, before that upon the visit to the hospital, as we've done with some of you when a child has been born, I've often thought it'd be appropriate to bring a towel for the mom. You say, why in the world? Because you know why? You know what moms do? They serve tirelessly. They are a servant, the epitome, the picture of someone who serves. There's no greater servant in the likeness of Jesus Christ than the wonderful mothers that unceasingly, tirelessly serve the families day in and day out. I mean, you think about it. Over the life of a child, for decades, mothers tirelessly serve their children, their family. And so much of it goes unnoticed or underappreciated. But you keep on keeping on. You serve your family, and through that service, here's the great reality. You're molding and impacting the generations to come. In all sincerity, moms, may I tell you this morning, as I not only speak to my mom and my wife, but each one of you, mothers, you're an inspiration to us. You're worthy of admiration for your tireless service. Proverbs chapter 31 and in verse 18, you see it there. The last part says this, her candle goeth not out by night. I, I know the life of a mother and how you often burn that candle on both ends. You're the first to answer the call in the middle of the night. You're the one who gets up and you get things ready in the morning. Thank you for that. Proverbs 15a says this, She riseth also while it is yet night. I did that this morning to drop Eric off at the airport. That's not fun. I don't like getting up when it's night. It's dark outside. That's not fun. Moms, thank you for your service. You are a blessing. You are the embodiment of ceaseless serving. Thank you for being that perfect picture of Christ-like service. You turn with me, I'd like for you to see a second one, letter H. We'll hold our spot here. We'll be right back to Proverbs 31. But look at Proverbs chapter 15, if you will. Proverbs chapter 15, and one of these that are dear to my heart, I, I think sometimes that we can miss out on the, this reality. The first part of verse 13 of Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs 15, verse 13, the first part says this. 15, 13, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Look over with me two chapters, Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22. Chapter 17, verse 22, again, the, the first part of it, we're dwelling on the positive. The rest of these verses deal with the negative, but I'm thankful for mothers who dwell on the positive. Verse 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That's the best medicine I've ever heard of, amen? You know, I've taken some bad medicines in the past. That's a good one right there. Hey, letter H. T was certainly the reality that they're tireless in serving your family. H is this, happy in countenance. Happy in countenance. Can I tell you, there is no one, I mean no one, that can cheer a child like a mother can. Take a child in his or her weakest moment, a moment of greatest fear, or in a moment of greatest pain, and there's but one countenance, one person, one heart that heals the broken heart of that child, his mother. I've many times, uh, down through many years, ministry in churches and schools and other places, have you ever seen a child get hurt either in playground or out here and, and you just see the tears start to well up and, and I, I, I think I have a compassionate heart most times. And uh, I mean, yeah, I just, my heart goes out to him and there's been a couple times where I've gone along to him, especially when I was a teacher and things like that or even a youth pastor, a teenager got hurt, a junior high, whatever the case. And but your heart goes out to him and you try to go there and I'll tell you, you can do all you want, but you ain't nothing like mama. There's been times out in this foyer I saw a little one get hurt, and I just see those tears. Oh, okay. You know what my first statement is? Oh, are you okay? Let's go find your mom. Or dad, whatever the case may be. Today it's mom. Let's go find your mom. And why? Because, boy, mom's countenance. You know what that is? In the, in the moment of a bad time, that's a merry heart. And it doeth good like a medicine. 
We jokingly will say the statement, won't we? And moms don't get offended by this. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. That's a funny statement. We like to say that. that hey, let's keep mama happy. Hey, here's the reality of that. Do you realize there's a great truth even in that statement? It really speaks to the impact and the influence that a mother's countenance will have on the home. It really does. Whether that's true to the degree that some people uh, seem to think it is. Right? The fact is this. You have a huge impact. Your countenance has a huge impact on the environment and the culture of the home, if we might put it that way. Uh, the outlook, the demeanor, however you want to describe it. I'm so thankful, moms, that you make home a happy place. That you brighten the day, yeah, the lives of your children with your cheerful countenance. May I put it this way? Your merry heart as you tirelessly serve your family is the sunshine in a tumultuous world for your children. It really is. Man, uh, you think back. Boy, your mom knows how to brighten your day. To all the things she does and even her words. You are in many ways the stability, the rock for your children. The happy countenance they can look to when life throws its worst at them. You are the medicine we all need when we are beaten down, overwhelmed, and tempted to give up. Moms, thanks for being that well of joy and happiness. <laughs> that merry heart, that compassionate, smiling face, and every child needs and loves. Thanks for brightening our homes the way you do. Its impact will flow well beyond your years here on earth and to the generations to come. Thank you for that. Letter A. It really encompasses the entire passage of Proverbs 31. Now, we won't read a specific verse, but if we were had the time to read through the whole passage, you would understand this truth, this theme that runs through the whole passage. Letter A is this. Moms, you're always there when needed. You're always there when needed. Um, always working to provide what is needed. Always there, always present when needed for whatever is necessary in that moment. I remember growing up as a, as a child, just my brother and I, and, and now I've seen it repeated with the, uh, the multiplicity of our children in our home with Erica. You, you know what the, one of the favorite statements or favorite questions is I remember from child, and now I hear it today, Mom, where is my fill in the blank? Mom, where's my coat? Mom, where's my shoes? Mom, where's my backpack? Mom, where's my breakfast? Mom, where's this? Maybe sometime this morning somebody heard this. Mom, where's my Bible? Where's my dress shoes? Where's my tie? Where? I mean, we just love to, th you know what I'm grateful for? It seems like moms always have the answer. Sometimes the answer is this, where'd you leave it? That's a good answer sometimes. But I'm thankful that moms answer that question. Moms, thank you for knowing where our coat is. <laughs> our shoes are, our backpacks, our Bible uh, where we didn't put them back where they were supposed to be, and the millions of things we ask you for. Thank you for the countless meals and snacks you always have on the table, always providing. Thank you for always being there with the Band-Aid for our skin knee, for being there with us in the middle of the night when we are sick, for giving us your shoulder to cry on when life hurts. Thank you, mothers. There's one person that is always there when needed. It's you, Mom. Thank you for being that person in our lives. A consistent, stable source of meeting a need. Look with me at verse 15, if you will, with me. We look quickly at the letter N. Verse 15. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. I would have to say that of all these characteristics, certainly these are all correct as we think about her tirelessly serving her family, happy in countenance, you're always there when needed. I, I think this one I, I appreciate the most. I think this is just tremendous. A, a great ability of mothers that I, I think we often take for granted. I, I, I'm amazed. I think God has created you well for this and that maternal instinct. I really believe that. And it's this. Letter N stands for this. Nourishes, nurtures, and pushes. N nurtures or nourishes, nurtures and pushes. We use kind of as a statement, giving meat to her household, but it's really found throughout all this passage, this reality. Mothers that are fantastic in their ability to see the need, always being there to meet that need, and through that, giving us the nourishment we need. 
I, I've talked with many adults, and I love the, hearing this statement. In fact, just the last couple of weeks, I've heard it. And an adult will say to me, hey, you know what? When we were growing up, we didn't have much. We weren't rich by any exaggeration of that terminology or anything. But you know what? Mom and dad made sure we had just what we needed. And ours was a happy home. And we had, we had what we needed. We didn't have a lot. But boy, mom and dad made sure we had what we needed. Can I tell you, mom, when you nourish and nurture, when you know the perfect balance between that and pushing, you provide everything your child needs to be healthy and successful, both physically and spiritually. Thank you for that. I think it is well said that you, as a, uh, as a mother, um, nourish, more so than we could ever imagine. You see, the definition of nourishing is this, simply stated, it's giving what is necessary for growth, health, and good condition. And moms are particularly good at that. You do it. You do it well. You, you do it both spiritually and physically. Just like a plant that needs nutrients and, and enriched soil to grow and produce, mothers provide a nourishing environment within the home. A wise mother knows, and don't miss this, a wise mother knows the recipe for success calls for the right mixture of nourishing, nurturing, and pushing. Our wise mother knows that balance there. The definition of nurture is simply this, to care for and encourage the growth or development of. Like a person who, who shapes and trims and cultivates a plant, a mother is exceptionally gifted and, and works hard at nurturing her children, giving what is necessary to see them develop into Christ-honoring Christians. Um, I think it was this past Christmas. I, I, I've always been amazed and, and fascinated by bonsai trees. Anybody know what bonsai trees are? The little, little miniature trees and things like that. And boy, you can spend 10, 20, 30, 40. Some people spend like hundreds of years just forming that little thing into a tree. And they, boy, they look pretty cool. And I thought, well, this is fantastic. I bought my dad one for Christmas. And so that he could clip it, I, my, my goal was this, that one day I'll inherit it, amen? When he's trained it and gotten it all, you know, perfect and looking good, he's probably watching now. But anyway, um, you know, that, boy, because it takes time, right? And boy, you have to be so precise and clipping it to make it look like that little tree and everything else and pretty cool and pretty amazing. Moms, can I tell you this? And I mean this. You know what? You spend a lifetime, decades, training, pruning, and doing things to this tree. And the reality is, you may not always get to be around to see the, the fruit of that. But my friend, can I tell you, it is as much and important and crucial as anything in the formation of your children. What you do to a child who's 3 and 4 and 5 and 7 and 12 and 15 and 17 and 19. And, and then as they're an adult, as they come back to you for little snippets and little investments of wisdom and, and nourishing and nurturing and a little bit of pushing sometimes. My, what a blessing you are and how you mold and, and how you nurture and nourish. I believe as we study scripture that Timothy's mother was that kind of mother. As Paul referenced her in 2 Timothy, I think that in that she, she embodied these things. Her nourishing, her nurturing, and her likely pushing. I can just imagine she kind of had to, at times, kind of push Timothy along. That, that in response to him uh, to do great things for God produced a New Testament pastor. Uh, that was to God's glory. I'm amazed. I truly am. I'm amazed how wonderful mothers are at giving the right amounts at the right time of nourishing, nurturing, and pushing their children. I said it a moment ago, and I mean this. I really believe this is one of those characteristics that God creates mothers with. If you want to call it the maternal instinct, I'll tell you, sometimes I, as a father, I don't know when to nourish, nurture, or push. And I find sometimes I'm pushing at the wrong time, or I'm doing this at the wrong time. So we pray for wisdom and guidance and, uh, by the Holy Spirit, certainly. But the reality is this, moms, you do a great job. I love watching moms and how they, they know that perfect recipe of uh, nourishing, nurturing, and then pushing at times. And boy, I'm thankful for you doing that. I'm thankful for you listening to the Holy Spirit and guiding children. We, we praise you for that. You are an integral part of the family, of the church, and certainly of even our nation. Look at verse 26, if you will, as we quickly move along. Notice verse 26. She says this, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Law of kindness. Not only does she nourish, uh, nurtures and pushes the family, but uh, the letter K, K is this, She is kind and caring. 
She is kind and caring. No one can argue with the statement that that same maternal instinct of most mothers, most mothers comes out with their kindness and care for their children. Not just in their actions, but also in their words, as this verse points to. I like the fact that moms are uniquely created to be the encourager of the family, the comforter of the family, the one that expresses love and kindness mingled with wisdom, words of wisdom, wisdom in her words. We see in Christ, kindness was often on display. As he walked this earth, his was an amazing display of kindness. To, to those who were less fortunate, to those who even opposed him at times, he showed great kindness, certainly on the cross of Calvary. He demonstrated that kindness in, a, in wonderful ways. And in emulation of that kindness, in the reality that you and I are called to be Christ-like, you and I are commanded to show love to others, uh, to our neighbors, even to our enemies. We are, we are called and commanded to be kind one to another. Mothers, thank you for being a shining example of that command in your homes. For being the source of great kindness and loving care that every child needs. Thank you for conforming, uh, confirming, excuse me, and teaching that quote unquote law of kindness with your words and action. Uh, there's a lot of hate in the world today. I'm thankful for godly mothers that teach love. Uh, there's a lot of disdain and dislike. There's a lot of ill treatment of one another. I'm grateful for godly mothers who teach love one another and demonstrate it grateful for you you're a great example to us all and for that we are grateful moving quickly we come to the letter s and the word thanks uh, verse 30 describes it for us you see it there it, it speaks of this lady and and certainly all, all all women of this reality that they feared god moms can i tell you thank you for being the savior's light in your child's life I mentioned it at the end of Sunday school this morning. You are God's ambassador in their lives. Um, in fact, the Bible says in this verse, such a woman, such a mother is worthy of praise. I'm thankful that as a preacher, as the pastor of Fostoria Baptist Church, that I have the opportunity at times to influence and impact the lives of the children here at FBC. But neither me nor any Sunday school teacher nor any other teacher will be as big of a light for the Savior as you are, Mom. You have the opportunity, yea, responsibility, but also the privilege to have the primary role with the Father in training them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You often likely get to spend the most time with them in their early formative years. I'd put it this way, you are the one that most often pulls back the shades and uh, the curtains of their understanding and let's in the light of Jesus Christ through your words, your actions, and your instructions. Thank you for that. I, I love hearing the stories of a child coming to put their faith and trust in Christ. And I know they hear the Sunday school teacher. I, I'm thankful for Sunday school teachers. I'm thankful for Pee Wee and Patch. I, I'm thankful for junior church teachers. I'm thankful for all that have a hand in that. But can I tell you, you know what I know? I know that there is a mom at home, and a mom, likely a father too, that are steadily dripping the good news, the gospel, under their children. Presenting it. Sharing it. Answering those questions as you're driving down the road, and you get the question, where is God? <laughs> where did God come from? And that's where fathers say, ask your mother, because moms have all the answer. Hey, y you answer those. How, I, they come at the weirdest times, don't they? I mean, they just, those questions about everything. Where is heaven? You know, I mean, boy, you, you get them all. Boy, I'm thankful that in your patience, you say, you know what? I'm going to be the Savior's light in the life of my child. It, it is a shame if a parent ever says, I'm just going to let the church teach my children about God. I'm just going to let the Christian school, I'm just going to let this entity or this what a youth pastor or the Sunday school teacher, I'm going to let them be God's life. My friend, that is not how God designed it. The institution of family came first. And God has given you and I the responsibility of pouring into our children who he is. And building in them an understanding of who God is and uh, setting the groundwork for that relationship. Thank you for doing that. The Jewish Talmud, Jewish Talmud asked this question. Who is best taught? The answer given is simple. He that is taught of his mother. <laughs> Pretty amazing, isn't it? It's exciting. Your tireless labor in teaching your children of Christ, showing them who he is. Boy, I thank you for that. 
thank you for making it a priority. Thank you for seeing the evangelization of your child, your children, as one of your highest priorities. Thank you for dedicating yourself when you could be out earning millions of dollars. You could be out doing many things and accomplishing great things. Whatever, the, But you've dedicated yourself and the salvation of your children as your highest priority. Thank you for that. Thank you for giving them, for dedicating them to the Lord, for giving them to the Lord through your prayer and action, much like Hannah did with Samuel. There's no doubt in my mind, and uh, even before knowing uh, the Sunday school lesson, uh, this was part of the message, you are the Lord's greatest ambassador and lighthouse in the lives of your children. May I encourage you that many heroes of the faith who are serving Christ today or served Him in the past are not or were not what they were because of the talent and ability within them, but because they had a mother who gave them to Jesus Christ, dedication. And then in turn, not only gave them to the Lord, but gave the Lord to them. Mother, thank you for doing that. Thank you for spending endless hours and times just praying and giving them over to God. Dedicating them here in a, in a special service, in a special commemorative time where we're just dedicating consistently. Thank you also for then uh, repeatedly, unceasingly giving God to them through teaching them of that. Now, listen to me carefully as we bring this message to a close. Because I, I know that there might be out, uh, some mothers out there this morning. And as we've gone through that, here, here's reality. Because I, I know sometimes how mothers respond to things like this. You've heard the message. And as we've gone through T and H and A and, and N and K and S. And we've gone through each one of these. You've been like, boy, this is not an encouragement. I feel like I'm a failure across the board. You look at it and say, I, I know for as a father, when, I, boy, when I've studied for a father's day, I'm like, man, I, I've got to shore that out. I, got, I get that. I, I really do. And I understand that. And that, please understand the intention was literally to say thank you. And you might be saying, oh, man, I, I need to be more happy in my countenance. I need to have a better spirit before them. Boy, I, 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 need, I need to do a better job of having the right mixture of nourishment and nurturing and, and pushing them. I, I need to do a, a better job of always being needed. May I just encourage you by saying two things. You might feel like you have failed in some of those areas or, or all of the areas. Let me say this. First of all, your estimation and evaluation of yourself is likely flawed. Often we are our own worst critics. Not always. Sometimes pride gets the better of us. But the fact is this. If, if you are humble and you are Christ-like, you will often look at yourself and say, man, I'm a failure. Man, I trip up. I, I just mess up all the time. And our evaluation, uh, estimation of ourselves is flawed. You may have taken a slip. You, yeah, there may be an area you could do better at. And yet in that, you've painted a broad brush or painted with a broad brush and describing yourself as a failure. Can I just encourage you, moms, listen to me. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't take one slip up. Don't take one area, which, yeah, you could probably do better in. Don't take that and paint with a broad brush and say, I'm a failure as a mother. I'm a failure as a father, dads, if you were to the. Don't do that. Don't do that. Can I just encourage you? The fact is this. You have been successful and positively impactful in so many of these ways in the lives of the children. But you may only want to think about that one or two negative areas. You've done well. Enjoy the accolades, the praise of this day. Let your family brag on you a little bit. Let this pastor brag on you a little bit. Know that you've done well with God's help. Second, let me say this. There might be an area in which you've slipped a little bit, in which you have not done as well as you should or could. But be encouraged by the simple reality of Scripture. You can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. You can do all things through Christ. May I encourage you, the fact is this, anything we do as a Christian is through his strength, his grace. So would you be encouraged this morning? And one last thing I'd encourage you <laughs> uh, about, hey, don't forget this. The mothers who make the best or most impact are not perfect mothers, but faithful mothers. The mothers who make the greatest and the best impact are, are not perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect mother. In fact, if you think there is, you know what those children most normally are? They're discouraged <laughs> and, and uh, sorrowful because they, oh, we, can't, we can't live up to that. No, no, no. There are no such things. And I just encourage you, a faithful mother has a great impact.
Those who strive for the best but keep on keeping on, even when they slip or trip up in an area. Your children don't need you to be perfect. They just need you to be faithfully there, trying to be the best mom you can be according to God's word. Moms, you say this morning, hey, Pastor, is that going to be enough? Just being faithful, just trying to do my best to live up to God's word, is that going to be enough? Can I tell you, with God's help, that will be more than enough. God will use you. God will bless what you are doing in the home and in the lives of your children. And he will bring about great success in their lives as you are faithful in the calling of being a mother and leaning on him. For the rest of us here who have moms, obviously, be thankful for your mothers. Express your gratitude for everything. Not only today, but in the days ahead, encourage them. Help them in every way possible. You know, we hear a lot today. We hear a lot today about, oh, those who are on the front line and nurses and such. And, and th- Praise the Lord. Uh, that's wonderful. They, they, we rightfully need to hold them up in prayer and encourage them, uh, doctors and so forth. Hey, that's great. But can I tell you, moms are on the front line spiritually every single day. And we ought to be grateful for them. We ought to pray, pray for them. We ought to encourage them. And so moms, today, I say thank you. I thank you for all you do and all that you are. Thank you for being tireless and serving your family. Thank you for being happy in countenance and just blessing our homes. Thank you for always being there when needed. Thank you for nursing and nurturing and pushing when necessary. Thank you for being kind and caring. Thank you for being the Savior's light in your child's life. My friend, if you are blessed by a godly mother, make sure she knows it today. 